Let me just. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you this evening? Doing great. How are you? I'm excited to be here. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting on Dr. Stedman. Yes, sir. So we can get started. How how's everything going? It's going um a, a little bit overwhelmed, but it's going. So trying to um, keep I have a schedule that I try and keep everything um scheduled. So yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Well it, it is overwhelming doing it in three semesters when it was originally designed to do it in five. So Yes, sir. You know, that's that that's that's our issue. You know, yes, sir. We used to do this where you had a semester off in between to catch up. Okay. Um, yes, but, sir. But students students wanted it to be faster. And so yes, sir. I get that. And so um that's that's kind of where we are now is uh, there is no semester, dark semester to catch up like we one time had. So we have yes, to sir. we have to double up and triple up on our task now right unfortunately some folks just are not some folks are just not capable of keeping up and i yes, understand that. yeah i just didn't want that i didn't want either of you to think that uh because I, I think i was having some issues of uh, understanding where to turn some things in even yeah. like um, but I didn't want you guys to think that I, you know, as far as slacking with turning things in on time, because that's not me. My boss will tell you that I turn things in on time. So I just wanted to make sure. That's a, you know, that's a, uh, that's a big thing. And that's one yes, of the sir. things that, that in 603 that I really harp on in 603, which is law and finance, is, is that a lot of the things that you have to turn in are legal requirements. Yes, sir. So that the district can get their money from the state or from the feds. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that you, you have to understand about school funding is the state doesn't cut you a check at the beginning of the year for the number of students that you have enrolled. Yes, sir. They reimburse you. You have to have enough operating capital to run schools for the first month. And then they reimburse you if you turn in all the data and turn in all the reports that they require, they'll reimburse you at the end of the first month. And so that per pupil money that they give you is distributed in 10 equal segments. Yes, sir. So if you're, if you're not a person that stays up on, stays on, does things on time and on a schedule and can follow directions and get things in when they're due, you won't last in this business because um, there was a time when locals had enough money that they might have two or three months of operating capital, but now they barely have one and they need that money back to pay the bills. Yes, and sir. All those reports and all the stuff that, that you have to turn in, there's dollars attached to that. Yes, sir. And so that's one of the things that you learn in 603 is about the modified accrual accounting system that North Carolina uses. And they don't pay you for the number of students on the ro roster. They pay you for the number that attend. Um, and so, and you only get that at the end of the month after you've already spent your money to begin with. And so, um, you know, just keeping up, turning your reports in on time, getting your data in the databases um, has become of paramount importance now that we don't have a lot of extra operating capital in the local budget. If, don't get that money from the state we're, we're in trouble yes sir and so that's i'd like to say that being smart and industrious and all but, but more importantly can can you follow a time schedule and get your you know your turn right. on time yes sir that, that's a biggie yes sir because i mean right now that's part of what i'm having to do with the position that i'm in right now um um as I'm an instructional coach, mm -hmm. so I have to turn in stuff, but I'm still trying to make sure I turn in my um, my assignments, but also make sure I'm turning in my school, uh, like you said, for the state law um, in South Carolina and different things with Title yeah. One that we have. So yeah, yes, sir. yeah. and uh, my suspicion is is you have to basically turn in a head count every month. Yes, sir. So that they can see that that. 
that you're serving who and what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Getting, if you're getting state reimbursement or if, you're, if your position is a state paid position, you yes, have sir. to turn that data in. Just like um, the principal has to file a school activity report every month in terms of what the teachers did to justify yes, getting the teachers paid as well. That, that's a standardized one, but yeah, everybody has, there's, there's reports that go up the line for everybody and everything now to justify that check at the end of the month. Uh, right. If you don't, just like EC head count, if you don't, if you don't get your head count in, then you, you lose the funding from those students that month. And everything is now tied to a month to month basis. And I hate to say it, but people just don't seem to understand. They say, oh, that's just pushing paper. No. Um, there's money attached to that paper. And so right. it's important. And so one of the things that we're hoping that we're teaching you um, through this preparation program is, is the importance of, of meeting your deadlines, getting your work in, following directions, those kinds of things. Because if you're always late, we'll get somebody else. You know, we can't, know. you know, I, you know, as somebody who supervised principals, it's not, you, know, you don't like having to go out to the same places all the time and ask them, you know, what I used to ask, I mean, quite honestly, when I'd go out is I'd ask principal, assistant principal, I'd ask them, what were you doing that we weren't paying you for that prevented you from doing what we were paying you for? Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to get you some time management training, or maybe we need to get you some training in, in what, what's important. Uh, obviously you don't think what we want is important. You have, you have other things that you're doing that you think is more important than what we think. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to come to some accommodation that, you know, because we're employing you and paying you that, you, that what we think is important has to be important to you as well. Right. Um, and so, you know, um, because state departments of public instruction don't have a bit of problem picking up the phone and calling people in the central office and saying, where's our report, where's our data? Um, right. If we don't get it within X amount of time, we're going to flip the switch for this month, which means you won't get paid this month for that. Right. And um, that doesn't go well mm -hmm. um, because we have to be able to pay our bills. Um, that's the business side of the organization that, that folks that are school-based many times don't, don't understand until they move into administration that – there's pressure coming from everywhere to make sure that that data and information flows back up the line. So the money will flow back down the line. Right. Um, and that, that's why it's, it's important as it is. All right. We've got a few folks on. Um, what are we supposed to be covering tonight? Anybody have anything that I haven't covered that they need? I think I'm caught. I'm caught all the way up. as should be with everything at this point. I'm just compiling and turning that in this week. Okay. All right. All right. That sounds good. I'm the host already. All right. It says we're recording as well. Oh boy. Yeah, it's like we are. Let me get out of that. All right. Share screen. Let me get started with this. All right. Okay. Make sure I've got everything I'm supposed to have here. All right. So there's the scale handbook. I've got the template. I've got that. I've got that. Okay. I think we've got everything. I think I can close that one. All right. Okay. So whenever Dr. Stebman gets here, we'll be ready to roll. Okay. I've got, got everything I can think of to drink tonight to try to Stay awake. All right. Dr. Lamb, when you were.
when after you've turned in your app cell, how do you know when it's been graded by the state? Do you get an email? Um, you go to scores, results, and task stream. Got it. Um, let me show you that. Um, let me do that right now. Come on, you can do it. All right, so check back, you know, 24 hours and then 48. If you don't have it in 48, let me know. Okay. But, um, share, let me get a new share. All right, so when you go to task stream and you sign up, log in, go to task stream, sign in, go to your DRF. It'll say spring 18, and then switch over from your work page to scores result. And your results, your score will be right here in this category. Okay. When did you submit yours? Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Today's Tuesday. It should be done by tonight. Let's, let's see what we got here. Okay. I don't, did you submit in task stream for evaluation or in, in Blackboard, turn it in? Turn it in. Blackboard. Okay. All right. So, in whose shell did you put it in? Yours. Mine? Yeah. All right. That's good to know. All righty. You should have gotten right here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, see, man. All right, Jenny. Let's see. I graded yours on March the fourth. I guess that was Sunday. At 12.41 p.m. So, when you get your grade, you go ahead and submit it. So, you got your grade. So, you can go ahead and submit it now. Okay. I normally send a note that won't show up on this page, but I normally send a note that says submit to, to task stream. But when you see that point value, you can, do you see that in your grade? I didn't see that the last time I looked, but I haven't been on today. So it said that I graded it at 1241 p.m. on March the 4th. Was that Sunday? Yes. That doesn't I, had, I had seen a note from you that said, go ahead and submit to turn it in. Yeah. So that's, yeah, then I went. When you get your grade, there's also a note on that. Um, that says submit to task stream. It won't, again, it won't show okay. up on this. But as soon as you see your grade, um, then you can, you can submit it to task stream. And Dr. Lamb, that's probably going to be addressed up front because I've had a couple of others and I just said hold off and we just announced it to everybody when the meeting started. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. You see yours has been graded and turn it in. Uh, as soon as you see that, and I try to grade them the same day, uh, as soon as you see that one, um, you know that when you got your grade, you can you can submit it. Now there is a note that goes with it, but now uh, I don't. One of the students said she couldn't know then where the note was, but let's see. Hmm.
there is a feedback to learner column. And so, so if I put that in there, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, quite honestly, because I put it in the first time. Gretchen, just look at Gretchen's note she just sent, Dr. Lamb. Right. Let me. I found mine in grades in the blackboard, not in the class shell. There you That's go. That's so great. On the blackboard, uh -huh. not on, in the class shell. Yeah, it won't go in the class shell. It'll be in your intern shell. So I'm guessing you can go. I'm, I'm guessing you can go what to my grades and it will show up there. But as soon as, regardless of if there's a note that you can see or not, as soon as you see that hundred, you submit. And it should come the same day. But again, you're, you're right. That's, that's going to have nothing to do with Blackboard. Am I right, Dr. Lamb? It's not going to have anything to do with your class shell. It that's what I mean. Yeah, the class shell, yeah. You should be able to find it. If, if the student version should have a my grades up here, um, there should be something where you can go and see your grades. As soon as you see that, you soon as you see that hundred, you can submit it. If 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 you see something other than the hundred, uh, that means there's a problem. But, but I will email you if there's a problem. Kelly Jones, I can't see my grade at all. Well, let me look and see if if. Um, my my is under Hamilton for the. Oh, yours is in his. Mm -hmm. Let me. He may not have graded it yet. Okay. Let me switch over. Now I can't. I don't think. I don't think I can see his grade center. I don't think it'll let me see his grade center. And and again, Dr. Lamb, everybody because of other things that they're doing everybody's not going to respond as quickly as you and I do on some of the things. Uh, yeah, they're supposed to, you're supposed to give them a couple of days. Let's see. No, I can't see his. We've got, we've got you spoiled a little bit, Dr. Lamb and I do. You, you <laughs> yeah. That is for sure. And that's okay. That's okay. All right. Well, I'll just okay. wait until it pops up. That's mine right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like Kelly. Yeah, Kelly there it is. I see it. Okay. Seven but if anybody, if, if you don't hear something within a, a, a day or two at the most, you need to let me know or let Dr. Lamb know and we will check into it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Lamb, I have a question before we okay. get started. For the um the turn it in, like is that supposed to, if something is a problem, is it supposed to like pop up that there's an issue with it? Yes. Okay. Yes. What well, it gives me a number. Mm -hmm. All right. Can y'all see the needs grading screen? No, it shows Aptail Task 1 is what we're looking at. Good. All right, so. Can y'all see the screen now? Yes. It's showing evidence one. Evidence one of the Apsil is what we're All looking right. at. All right, so here's one I just, just plugged in and, and, and ran through the process. See this number right here? Okay, we don't see. Where? Where? Oh, I see. 23? Yes, sir. 
So that means that's that's good to go because it's 23. Okay. That's what I was – so it gives me a score. Now, if it were up in the 50 range, then I'd go through these individual sections and look and see what the problem was. But right. at 23, we're good to go. Okay. Okay. Okay, what what is a again what what is a score that they should be that they should pass a certain score? What should they be concerned about? I'll let them know, but it's you let them know. Okay, I I'd let you have up to fifty five on this one. Okay, I got okay. you. So this one's good, and so what I'll do is. I will give this person a hundred submit for evaluation and task stream. I hope that you'll be able to see that. All right, Kelly, look at yours. Go to your to Hamilton's internship shell, Dr. Hamilton's shell, and see if that came through for you. That number, that'll just show up on your end? Like we that, can't see that, that, that. And it will give me the breakdown on my end. Okay. And then I will, I will work with, if there's a problem, I'll, I will look at it, and sometimes it's not really a problem at all. Right. The only time I'll get in touch with you or give you a zero and tell you to get or send you an email to get in touch with me is if it's like 85 and I've gone through and it's like, oops, your narrative looks like somebody else's narrative. It's okay, okay that, that your format and your references and those things, they are going to match. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we're only interested in, you know, that's why I said for these, anything up to about 55 doesn't, does not cause me any concern. Okay. If it's around 50 or so, I'll, I'll, I will actually look at the analysis of it. Okay. And then I'll be able to work with you on that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a good question. My grade was in there, Dr. Lamb. Thank you. <laughs> See how easy that is? Yeah. I'll, I'll, get those knocked out. I'll get those knocked out tonight. You, you guys just spoiled us. I was, I'm like, wait, where's my feedback? I, I thought I did something but, but, wrong. <laughs> but, 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 I'm glad you let me know. See, now I'm a, I won't leave. I won't leave and go home until I get all those cleared out of there tonight. Thank you. That's, you gave me, you've given me something to do. Well, I knew you didn't have any plans tonight. Nope, I didn't. <laughs> I did not. I mean, you sleep when you're dead. Why, well, you need to sleep. That's right. Um, <laughs> that's, that's what I've been telling myself this whole time. That's exactly right. But Dr. Stedman and I were talking this morning, and I was talking with Calander a few minutes ago. We're trying to train you to be administrators here. Getting your stuff in on time, being overworked and underpaid, that, that's, that's going to be your life. Uh, that, that's what you can do. In fact, you can go stand in line in West Virginia right now and join them with the pay, with the pay thing. Yeah. You're going to be anyway, overworked and underpaid, and you're always going to be under the gun. Calandra, I just responded to what you put in in uh, Blackboard. I got yours. There were a few more that were just put in there at the last minute, but I'll get them after our session tonight. Uh, uh, to one to just send a message to you, Dr. Yeah, Lamb. I saw that one. I think I already put her in mind. You can, you can have two. I've cleared her with everything. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't mind you being in mine. Um, I think I actually already did that. I think I already put, I might have already put Tawanda in mine. Okay. Let's see if I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close my door here in a minute. I hear the maids coming all right let me see do, 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 do. Do, do, do. yeah Tawanda's are Tawanda, you should already have my shell as well as dr hamilton's I think I did that earlier today. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, terms of in are already good. How do we get them? Okay, we sound this okay. My file was too large. Yeah, I know. We got that one. We got that. That's one of the, that's the first thing I'm going to cover tonight. Now I returned a call today to somewhere down in the lower part of South Carolina and didn't get an answer. I was in meetings all day today, but I did return a call uh, eight. Let's see what I called a number today. I think that's Oh my lord. Emily's Emily's texting me, Dr. Stedman. Okay, let's see. Who did I call? Oh, today? I called the eight four three number. Eight four three three oh four seven three and then the last couple of digits. So I did return calls today. I just didn't get any answers. Okay, so let me look at this. Let me answer this one question and we'll get started. Thank you. Not everybody's online. Yeah, we've got 46 students. Yeah, it's time for us to roll. Go ahead and get started with whatever you got, Dr. Stedman, and I'll join right in. Well, the, the thing is, I, I know you and I talk, so, I mean, we're going to have to hit things head on before we start into the app tale. Um, I know that the message that I sent this morning was pretty strong. It got attention. I meant for it to. Um, um, we've just got to make sure that we are pacing ourselves, that we're, that we're not just submitting work and thinking that it's okay to submit it without having communicated properly. And, you know, every now and then it's okay, but if it's the same student every week or every other week, you run into a problem, you need to you need to, to look at yourself. You need to do a self evaluation, because like Dr. Lamb said, in this business, it's not going to get easier. And our job is to train you to learn how to manage your time, to uh, schedule things accordingly. Because that is all part. Multitasking is a major part of being a school administrator. And so so when I push you, it's because. I've been there, Dr. Lamb's been there, we've done it for many years, and we know what is ahead for you, and we want to make sure that you're successful in this business, and, you know, if my name's attached to it, I want it to look good, and I want you to look good, so, you know, I don't want you to take it, take it personally, you can get mad with me, but just build a bridge and get over it so that we can move on, that's what I want you to do, but um, Dr. Lamb, are you step, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's talk about just very briefly, not a lot, very briefly, because they need to, they need to be bringing closure to the axle. So let's let's talk about you know, some of the questions were um, once they have submitted it and and I've looked at it and I've said it's good to go. You need to send it to turn it in and I put turn it in slash or or. To Dr. Ham, uh, Dr. Lamb, or Dr. Hamilton for turn it in slash task stream. I and and many of them have completed that process, so I know that is that is that that it that it works. But some are not quite understanding what they do first: the cart before the horse, the horse before the cart. So just briefly explain to them what they need to do at this point, because everybody should be getting to this point if they haven't already done it. 
Okay, let me finish this. Okay. You're going to be so happy, though, once you get into the app tale that we're going to talk about tonight. You're going to be so happy because the, the work is going to be different, but the format's going to be the same. You've already learned the process by going through the appsel that you'll be doing with the app tale. So, you know, you have... You've gone through boot camp already. Yeah, it's going to be easier now. So <laughs> when you get through with it, when 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 you get through task five of the app cell and, and Doctor Seven says it's good, you come to my internship shell or Doctor or Doctor Hamilton's, and I'll I'll catch his up tonight. Uh, he's been out of town and been busy, so I'll catch his up tonight. All right. So you come to app cell evaluation Dropbox, and when you do, you're going to see. App cell final evidence narrative right here. Now, I created an alternative Dropbox, if you, um, but disregard it. That's if you know if you have a problem, I can let you use that one. But I want you to use the one that says <coughs> App cell final evidence narrative. You upload in there. It'll come to me. I'll I'll adjudicate your paper, just like I did Kelly's a few minutes ago. It was 23. There's no no need to even look. Now, if it'd been 55, I'd have had to go in and looked at each of those sections to see why it was so high. But as long as it's that low, uh, then I just I'll hit you back. Now, if you don't see where it says submit in the notes, it will say a hundred. hundred means submit, uh, and get it in get it in black get it in task stream. You'll get a two day turnaround in there as well. Some of you, uh, uh, everything that was submitted by the end of the day on Sunday will be graded by the end of the night tonight. There's a forty eight hour turnaround on that as well. But I will catch up, Doctor Hamilton, just as soon as we get off the air tonight. Um, I'll, I will catch that one up before I go home. Um, but um, if there's a problem, we'll I'll get back in touch with you. Uh, Dr. Lamb. And sometimes when there's a problem uh, at this point, it may not be. It may be that you haven't done anything wrong. It's just like. A couple of students, you had so much stuff, you had to get rid of some of the stuff. So it doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It means that you you really have overdone it. Yeah, with with stuff. So so we have to fix that. Well, one of the things is pictures. Now we talked about taking screenshots and pictures and those kinds of things to put in your competency folio. That was because we don't want you to put those. You can put one picture. You can put one picture like in your app cell of your PLC, but if you'll remember, just one. Now, some of you have got the, got the, got the, the selfie addiction. Uh, I think 10, 15 pictures in, in there. You know, I appreciate that, but you remember that, that every one of those – <laughs> Pixel counts like a character, and so I had one that came in today, and we worked on it, and we got it down below 17, 17 15 to 17 megabytes, uh, and a, every picture is like six megabytes. So you can have 50 pages of text that doesn't, doesn't take up as much space as one picture. So one picture, and we may have to take your appendices off as well if you've got a bunch of screen grabs in there or a bunch of pictures. Um, so remember, you weren't supposed to pile your paper full of, of artifacts. Those go in a separate folder. That's why we have them in there. So if you look at your file size and you exceed 15 megabytes, you're going to have to get stuff out of it because it won't, it's too big for task stream. And remember, you don't put live links and all that stuff in there. Don't, don't. But when you're sending it to me for, for a grade purposes, it's okay. It's just that you may have to – do differently when it comes to submitting it at the end for um, for task stream. Uh, yeah. So the question came in: Do we include the agenda meeting minutes from every PLC? No, one, just one. Again, we got to keep the size down on, on these files, uh, and the state graders don't want to have to go through all that stuff. Um, let me see. I'm answering, I'm answering texts and emails at the same time. I'm trying to look at them, but, but, uh, um, they're wearing me out on, on all my devices here. I'm answering questions, getting texts. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right, so we're good to go. So that's what you do. You put it in there, and, and we'll get it. If you have Dr. Hamilton's or mine, it doesn't matter. Uh, I've got access to his. I'll start grading his there on a daily basis, too. Uh, so that won't be a problem. So make sure you get it in there. And see, if we do it now, we don't have to worry about the state sending it back and causing all these problems. We'll just do it ourselves. So when you submit it for state grading, it, it won't be a problem. Um, again, we can fix it before it goes to them. Once it goes to them, everybody gets all officious and, you know, starts having a meltdown. So let's fix it on our end first before we get it to them. Um, uh, they get a little bit officious and angry when stuff isn't like that. they want it. So um, I know that uh, Jenny got hers back in today. I've already checked to see that it was back in there. So it'll get graded fairly quickly, I think. Uh, the grader, I know him, he'll, he'll grade it fairly quickly. Um, he actually works at Gaston College, so hopefully he will he'll get it done pretty quickly. Uh, I know that no more students than they have, he's not too busy. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of ugly, wasn't it? Um, all right, so that's what you need to do in terms of running it through your turn it in in your internship shell. And I have it set up that way so it doesn't show in your class as well. Um, we want these things to, you know, don't, everybody doesn't need to know our business. And that's enough said on that. So questions on turn it in for turn it in to check before we go for straight grading so we won't get accused of plagiarism. All right, everybody seems to be caught on to the process pretty well now. Um, you know that I have made you an Aptel template. Um, New share. I want to go over that template with you tonight. Um, it's in the same format as before. Again, uh, you leave the black where there's yellow. You put that in. Now, you did a background information about your school and community. You did that in the app cell. I think we called it school profile there. School Just profile, copy yeah. You Just use the same thing. Same thing. Just copy and paste that now. You um, use it six times. You're going to, yeah. So I said, once you write that, if you're smart, you know, if you write it thoroughly enough the first time, you can use it every time. It saves you a lot of time to do that. Now, I had this come in tonight uh, for a student in, not in my class. I have actually an, an XM shell that I, anybody in other classes can get to me. And so uh, I had one come in tonight and she had all the, the materials that you see in prompt one here, but she hadn't put it in sections. And what I wrote back to her is you need to organize your paper in these sections because that's what the evaluator is going to be looking for. These things here, building efficacy results, or that should be a section in bold with, with that, that section of narrative underneath it, just like we did in the app cell. Again, when you see bullets like that, that means that's, that's a section heading, and you should have content that goes in that, not just, just like narrative. Just like task four, Dr. Lamb. It was, they're, they're going to do that just like they did task four in the Apsil. Exactly. You're going to do it the same way. When you see bullets like that, I should see a section labeled that because that's what your grader is going to be looking for, your evaluator. Make it easy on your evaluator. You say, well, Dale, the same information is there. Yeah, but, it, but, 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 but if I'm the evaluator, I've got to hunt it. I don't want to have to hunt. You know, make it, make it. In, in, do any of you or have any of you ever taught reading in, in the primary grades? Um, anticipatory set, you know what that is? Um, where when you teach reading, you, you do it with pictures and, and with rhymes so that kids begin to anticipate what the next word is going to be. It helps emerging readers. Well, we're trying to help emerging graders here. Uh, we're trying to do an anticipatory set. Uh, so that they know what they're, we're telling them what they'll be looking for. We're helping them alone. Um, you know, the old Dick and Jane books from mine and Dr. Stedman's era, that's what those were. Um, they were anticipatory. And then when we went to big, big books like Miss Wishy Washy and all of those, I don't know if y'all remember that or not, I, I do. Well, during that time, um, the big book era, the whole language, um, those were teaching anticipatory set. You knew what you could anticipate what was coming next. We're trying to train the evaluators that when they're grading work from Gardner Webb, they know what's coming next and it's going to be good. 
and they're going to give us, and it's going to be easy to grade, and they're not going to have to hunt things, and our folks are going to get good grades based on we have got them conditioned in that format. That's why, as Dr. Stedman said, you've been through the boot camp of the app cell. You now know the process. It will go much faster. Um, you know, you get, you, you don't even have to write a background and information on this one. We've already had you do that. You put these things in, you write, you write these things. You know what a literature review is now? We've had you do one. You know how to do a literature review. Um, now, you, you were in, in prompt two, you have to find a checklist for empowerment. I've got a couple of the most famous ones here. You don't have to use mine. The best way to find the checklist um, for empowerment is what do the administrators in your school use when they do walkthroughs? They have some kind of a checklist that they use when they do administrative walk walkthroughs that last from 10 to 15 minutes. What do they use? That's what we're looking for. And they Dr. Lamb, they, they need to remember that if your district is using something, it, 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 it is probably research-based. And so what you have to use must be research-based. Yeah. And I would not think that your school is not using something that has not been approved by the district. Right. Uh, no, North Carolina has things. And from our students last semester, South Carolina has some, some, oh, yeah. some uh, ha has, has their own uh, checklist as well. Yeah, it's by district in South Carolina as well. Yeah. So, you know, find out what they're using. It's going to be, these are the two major theories that I have here on the page. One of them is from Todd Whitaker, and, and it's the first one. This is empowerment as a school-wide leader, and this one from Marzano is empowerment as a classroom leader. Most districts have taken these two and, and made them into a, an overall checklist that they use when they go into teachers' classrooms. And it's research based because these these are the, the these are the parents of most all checklists. One or one or both of these is the actual origin of all checklists, because you know that Marzano is McCrill, um, which designed the teacher evaluation system that both states right. is McCrill. That's who Robert Marzano is. That's his organization. So these are these are the two watershed references in teacher empowerment. Todd Whitaker, who writes about school-wide empowerment, you know, what good principals do and all these things about teacher empowerment, that'd be Todd Whitaker. Robert Marzano writes about empowerment in your own classroom, being a leader in your own room. Dr. Uh, Lamb, let me say this. Now, Dr. Lamb has provided you with two examples there. Now, that doesn't mean that you just copy and paste what you see. That's an example. When you when you do your checklist, it should look professional. It should be something that you use as a document when you walk around. Uh, it should have the the rubric for your checklist for your comments. You've got to. This is just to help you develop what you do. Yeah. Now, if your school system already has something, and yeah. you know, don't reinvent the wheel if it's something that that you have and it works. Yeah. So. Use it. But but what I'm trying to show you is it needs to be research based. Research based, yes. That's the point of me putting these here. Yes. Is is that it needs to emanate from some research base that's accepted as best practice in our business. You you don't want to quote me, you want to quote the expert, Robert Marzano, is what I'm telling you. I'm gonna call Papa. You can't just you can't just Google this and find whoever pops up first because that's going to be some paid charlatan more than likely. You need to know who the person is in this. Just like we told you, Richard DeFore is is the man on PLCs. You know everything emanates from him. He's the one that 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 invented them. Everything that you see is just a takeoff on his work. You need to trace trace it back to. You know where this stuff started, and, and who is who is the authority? Who's the expert in this area? Dr. I Lamb. Burn today. I was in a, a meeting this afternoon, and it was announced that the library is going to clean out the uh, collection in the education session section here in the next few weeks. 
and and was making jokes about there's stuff back in there from the 80s that they're going to do away with. Well, not that I can help it because most of the literature for modern schooling started with the effective schools movement and teaching right. and, and accountability movement, the basic education plan of the 1980s. We don't need to forget that prior to that, we didn't have any of that stuff. And that's where a lot of this stuff developed from. We, can, we can't forget our history of where, how we got to where we are. But, you know, the librarians doesn't understand, well, we, that stuff's old. We, but but that, that's, that's like the Bible for us. That's where we started. That's what separates 1983 uh, and a nation at risk, 1982, um, the Carnegie stuff. That separates modern schooling from schooling prior to modern school. Modern schooling started in 1983 in America. And so you should be able to go back and see some of that stuff to understand why we are where we are now. And that's what I'm talking about here. These folks, this stuff's got a little age on it. It doesn't matter. It's the original stuff. It's research-based. It was the first time that things like this ever came out. Uh, and you need to, you know, don't use these, but you, whatever you use is going to be research-based and is going to be, this is going to be the parent of it. Dr. Lamb, I will say that many of the students in the past have used what, something that their district used, and then they've taken these two uh, examples that Dr. Lamb has provided, and they have created a list in addition to what your district has had because both of them, one will tell you one thing, one will tell you something else. All right. Uh, since we have one at our school, I just need to make sure it's research. If your school's using it, it is research-based. It is research-based. Um, you, you just need to locate the one your school's got. Uh, and you can look at it and see where it came from. It usually, it usually will reference, you know, how it was developed. All right. Uh, what about the ELOT 2 tool? Um, you can use that one. Dr. Mean, Lamb. You don't have to trace its origin. If your district is using it, uh, it will have the relevant information on it as to where it came from. Your district can't be using it without citing it as a reference. Right, that was I was going right. to say. How many sources for our literature review? All right, so that's a good question. Let's go back and look at that one right quick if I can get this thing to roll back. All right, now, when you see each one of these sections, I expect to see three references for each one of those sections. Let me say that again. Not three total, three for each of these sections. So that's three, six, nine, 12. I expect to see 15 references during that. That's going to be a pretty comprehensive, going to be pretty comprehensive, but you're doing, you're doing five main sections here. You're doing five main sections. But now when you get through that and then you'll discover your, your checklist, that's just go find it kind of thing. And then um, you'll collect your data in it. Um, again, um, after you do that, um, it gets pretty quick after that. So the bulk of your time in task one is going to be spent doing your literature review, but we want you to be an informed professional. It's very important that you understand that everything that we do as administrators needs to be evidence-based, needs to be research-based. And these are probably things that you don't know a lot about yet. And so that's why I want three, three references on these. Um, it shouldn't take you that long. You know, you can use Bulldog One, again, on the library tab in, in uh, Blackboard. All right. So, yeah, that's going to be a pretty extensive literature review with three, three references for each of those. Then you, you find out what checklist that they're using for walkthroughs in your building. And then you will actually collect that data. Uh, and you will write these sections. And then you will show, 
you know, I just use this as an example. You will show your data in a chart or a graphic organizer form. You're supposed to do a graphic that displays your data. Data is graphically represented. If you, you want to use pie charts or if you want to use graphic organizers like this, some way you need you want to use a pivot table. I don't care. You need to you need to display your data that, that you made your decisions out of. Three references. No, not for each prompt. Three references for each of these subsections. Let me explain that one more time. Building efficacy and, and, and empowerment among staff, three. Results oriented, three. Recruitment, three. Approaches, three. Teacher leadership, three. That'd be 15 total. Not three for the prompt, three for each of these subsects, subheadings here. No, the bibliography will not be annotated. No, it's just it's a literature. A, it's a regular reference section. Yeah, a literature review. A literature review. Just like well, we that, had, that was a good taught question. You how to write one. We taught you how to write a literature review with three references in it in the app cell. Guess why we had you do that? Because we knew that the app tell was coming and you'd have five sections where you need to write a short literature review with three references in it. Again, that was your boot camp. You've learned how to do that. We had you write a literature review with three references uh, in task what, two last, uh, of, of the app cell. So task, that, task three. Task three, excuse me. So that you would know how to do it now. If this program builds on, we don't have you do one-off things that you never that you never used again. All right, let's see. Got it, got it. No, it won't be annotated. All right, Candace had a question. We need to unmute her. Dr. Stedman, if you can, if we can find Candace. Okay, I will unmute her. It won't let me scroll down, Doctor. Wait a minute. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I've got it. And Candace Taylor, was that who had the... Yeah. I'm fine. Her. Was it Candace Small? Candace Taylor. Candace Taylor. Okay. I'm Candace Taylor. Taylor. Okay. Candace. All right. Question. Okay. That was an okay. That was an accident. Right. Okay. All Thanks, right. Candace. We got it. Okay. All right. We're good. All right. So... If you'll remember back in in uh, task three of your app cell, we had you do a, a, a brief literature review with three references in it. That's what we expect for each of these little sections right here. You've already done it one time. You should know how to do that. Should not have a problem with that. We've already had you do it. All right. Um, and then you present your data. Um, and then you're going to develop a growth plan. It's just like an action plan. And you're going to write a paragraph on each one of these. And then you're going to summarize it <coughs> in your graphic organizer. <coughs> just like you did for your action plan in the app cell. And then when you get here, you will write, you will write your, your competencies like you did last semester. Now, you do the nine that you didn't do for the app cell. You did 12 for the app cell. You do the other nine for the app cell. You're done. Go get it. And then you're done. So remember how you did your action plan for the app cell. You will do your growth plan for the app cell exactly the same way. Exactly the same way. It's just a staff development plan. You came up with an action plan from the app cell. For the map tell, you're coming up with a growth or staff development plan. Dr. Lamb, I, I think that on, on the on the app, so they had the option of doing the graphic organizer or the perk chart. This, they do not have an option on this one. Oh, I told you you'd be better off to do the graphic organizer. You should listen to me. <laughs> so, so on this one, you've got to do it what you what you see. Yep. I told you you'd be, you'd be thankful if you went ahead and, and, and bit, bit off this bullet to start with. You'd be thankful down the road. 
Yeah, we have to see an actual plan here of who, what, where, when, and why for staff development. Dr. Lamb, while you're while you're looking, remember now. Once you get your, uh, once you create your 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 checklist that you're going to use, you've got to actually get permission to go into to classrooms. Now, we decided last semester, Dr. Lamb, that if they can go into three to five teachers' rooms, that that would be sufficient. Is that correct? Still, yeah. Okay. You find you go you visit three to five rooms using your checklist. Now, when you go in, the research tells you what you should see. That's what you should see. That is in what you do when you do. What does research say you should see when you go in and, 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 and when you're observing teachers for best practices for teacher lit? What should you see? When you take that instrument in there, that instrument's going to actually, you're going to record what you see. Now, based on what research says you should see and what you actually see is the gap analysis. What is the difference between what research says you should see and what you actually see? You've got to talk about the gap in there. Where's the problem? How am I going to fix the problem? And that's where you, that's the whole purpose of the growth plan. What research says you should see what you actually see and what you need to do to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. um, permission from teachers or administrators. You've got to go through your administration, you know, for everything that you do. You can't go into a room and observe a teacher without uh, administrative permission. So. Now, listen carefully to this point. Um, I know you're going to have questions. I'll anticipate that, but listen carefully. We're not telling you that three to five walkthroughs will give you data from your entire staff in terms of where your gaps are. Right. What, what we want you to do is go to your administration and have them share their overall walkthrough data with you. Right. We're having you go in to learn how to do this, to understand what, what the process is. But we're not telling you that three to five teachers will represent right. your entire faculty. What we want you to do is go to your administration and say, can you share, it doesn't have to have names on it, can you share your walkthrough data with us so that we'll know where the gaps are. For That's a, that's a much more representative sample of your population than three to five teachers. We're having you do it to learn the process. But the data that you're going to collect for your gap analysis needs to come from your administrative team who does walkthroughs every day. And, and that's why it's important when they can that an administrator is a part of your PLC when you're talking about um, this plan. And, you know, they should be a part of it because you've got to actually present this whole action plan, you've got to present this to your administration and it should be in such a way that they can take your plan and they can use it to promote growth at your school, at your school site. That's the whole purpose behind it. Yeah. And so you want your sample to be representative of the entire population and three to five teachers is not a representative sample. That's just for you. Yeah. That's just for your learning but your actual information will come from your administrators there. That's why you want to use their walkthrough instrument because that's what they collected the data with. That's correct, Tamara. That is correct. What you said, what you asked. Yeah. No, you're using the same PLC, uh, Nathaniel, you're using, you're working. Is yeah. it, you will, the PLC you started with will be, it will be developed throughout the entire program. Mm-hmm. You'll keep the same PLC. But now that's a good that's a good point there from can we use more than five classrooms if needed? Yeah. But but again, get administrative permission. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point that uh, Tamara just made. Uh, that's why you align your checklist with the existing checklist, because the data is actually going to come from their walkthrough checklist. That's correct. That's why we said make sure you use theirs. 
Okay, Nathaniel, you don't have to add an administrator, just invite them sometimes to be a part of, because they're so busy, they're not going to be able to attend all your meetings. No. Just invite them when you need them, even if it's an assistant principal, just get somebody to, to come in and be a part of your meeting when they can sometime. Uh, the question from Janelle is, do we need to get written permission? Uh, I, would, I, would want it, I, I would want it in maybe the form of an email. Um, and you would also want to ask teachers, can I come to your classroom that you've, you know, that you've got proof that you've got permission and you can ask some teachers and, and a lot of teachers will let you come in. Um, now, I hesitate to show you this, but I'm going to anyway. Let me answer two more questions here. Uh, are looking to exit. Is it okay if we replace one or two folks? Absolutely. Uh, get people who are willing on your PLC. All right, so let me let me get out of this. Let me get out of this and go back to share screen. Desktop, share screen. All right, let me go back to this. Um, I don't have this anywhere in any of your shells, I don't believe, and I specifically didn't put it in uh, because I don't want you to, um, I don't want you to, to lean on this too heavily. But when Dr. Stedman was talking about what you see versus what you're supposed to be being your gap. Sometimes what you see should be defined on your checklist. Um, and there, there is some research behind that. And so let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. Um, let me, if I can get Blackboard to load here. It's trying to go wonky on me. Come on, you can do it. All right. For example, everything works off of Marzano more than likely. Um, this is this is a document that tells you what you should see actually in the room. It's basically the research behind these nine <coughs> ideal <coughs> strategies. Um, this is what it looks like and it explains it to you. So what I'm telling you is, is there's research behind all of this stuff. Let me, and then even like with Marzano, there's another one here. High yield strategies, what the research says, and then what it looks like in the classroom. You don't have to track, that's already been done for you. That, that is all embodied in that checklist. You just need to understand, people just didn't grab that stuff out of the air and put it in that checklist. There was research behind that. Uh, it was evidence-based, was research-based, data-driven. Um, and, 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 and it'll tell you on that checklist what you're looking for. They didn't just grab that stuff out of thin air. Um, it's... There's documents that support that. Here it is. And it tells you what it, and even gives you examples of what you'd be seeing in that classroom if those things are present. That stuff's all embedded in that checklist that schools are using. Now, if you use one that has high yield strategies uh, as the actual basis and you don't know what they are, you can, you can look this stuff up. You can research it. Um, and so I, I specifically did not put this in your shells because this is, if you don't know what you're looking at, this is confusing. But suffice it to say that there is research and work behind that checklist. It, they didn't just pull it out of thin air. Uh, and that's why you want to use the, the school district's checklist for walkthroughs because it has been research and evidence-based. Um, and so this is kind of the documentation behind high yield strategies right here. 
Uh, so that stuff's available. You may find it in your research, um, but it is out there. You can't just make up a checklist of things that you think ought to be. It has to be research-based. So that's why you want to use the one your district uses, because it is research-based. It is a legal document. All right. So that covers that covers the Aptel. Um, let's see. When am I going to be back on again with with these folks next Tuesday? No, sir. They 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 are off next. They're off from us next Tuesday. We come out Tuesday week. It's spring break for the school, but it's they've got to work on this stuff. So. So I'll be back on what? Two weeks from tonight? Two, with two weeks from tonight, we'll be back. We'll be back together. That's why I went ahead and covered all all four of the tasks tonight. Right. So but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean they can't send me work to look at. Right. They can they can put stuff in Blackboard. They can send it for me to look at. We'll continue. We continue on. Right. It's just that they we don't we don't have to come on next Tuesday. All right. All right. So. Understand that the, that the checklist that you use is research based. Understand that you're only doing three to five, but that you're going to gather the data from your from your administration so that you can do gaps because they'll know uh, where the teachers are weak and strong, and they may even have that data already compiled for you. Um, and you're going to build a, a basically a growth plan, a staff development plan out of that is what you're going to do. And it's going to look just like what you did in terms of the action plan in the app cell. And so, um, you know, we, uh, we build on the things that we do in the previous one. Now do a good job in this. If you do a good job in, in your app tell now, when you get to your OMA with me next semester, this summer, um, I'm going to let you use your, your app tell the first three tasks of it to satisfy one of the tasks of the OMA. If you do a good job in it now, do it, the right way. Uh, it will, again, you, it will pay dividends down the road. If you do it the right way, the way that we've taught you. What if your school already has a PLC working on this? I hope your school's got a PLC working on, on uh, professional uh -huh. development. Everybody's school's got one. You know, Mark said, but you're going to you could work somewhat in combination with them. Wouldn't be a bad idea to to collaborate the with them. They will direct you to go around and park in one of them banks. You you'll just be another another <laughs> arm to whatever is already happening. You should be. Wait just a second here. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay, you're unmuted now. Okay, I'm just saying that uh, that that if they've already, they should have something that that's that's happening at the school with staff development. You're going to be an extension of what mm -hmm. is happening, and you should be able to take it to a different level. Yeah, you're only looking at one specific thing. Last room. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, you you they're they're going to be looking at at the overall um, staff development program. You're you're looking specifically at empowerment. You're just looking at a piece or a part of it. We don't have you tackle the whole thing. That would take way too long. We're just looking at one specific component of a staff development plan, which is a growth plan for teacher empowerment. All right. Dr. Stedman, what have I missed tonight? What else did you want me to cover? I, I think that that's that's a, that's enough for them right now. Uh, they 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 they've got to know, and they're going to need the next couple of weeks to be able to 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 read and study. And this, they know what to do. And again, this is by design. We're going to see. We're cutting the strings a little bit. We're going to see what you're able to do on your own before we come back together. And I'm hoping that I'm going to see lots of good stuff that you will already start submitting. And I, I can see that, that, you know, that you're able to connect the pieces of the puzzle and put it together yourself without having to be directed step by step. Yeah, you got to get you toughened up before you get me next semester. Oh, it's ugly when you get me. 
Mm. You heard that laugh, didn't you guys? <laughs> uh, mm -mm -mm. I love but that you chase. You don't realize what a nice man Dr. <laughs> Stedman is. You have me next semester. Oh, it'll be brutal. Oh, uh, it, it won't be. It won't be fun if you if you need directing every step of the way, because um, we're going to do law and finance next semester. And we can't hold your hand in law and finance. You have, there's a lot of learning that has to take place. Um, and we hope by the time we get you there that you'll be able to pick up and go on your own. That's, that's the, the idea here. Um, we can't keep you immature all the way through this program. We need to be emerging leaders and step out. And so we're gonna, we'll continue to support you this semester. But as he said, we're, we're pulling back a little bit. We're going to see how you can do. Uh, we'll, we'll rush back in to support you and we won't let you fall, but we've got to have you toughened up by the time you get through the end of this, this semester so that we can pick our feet up and run during the summer. Well, Dr. Thank Lamb, I've heard, from, I've heard from many, many, many of the students, and in eight weeks' time, this is your eighth week, uh, many of them have, have shared with me how much they have grown professionally already in just eight weeks, and, you know, they're to be commended for that. Some uh, Chase said, who needs to go to the beach on spring break? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It didn't take that long. Uh, oh, Lordy. <laughs> uh, it is a lot of work. That, there's, there's no doubt. But as I was talking when we, when we started tonight, uh, it is, uh, you know, this program was initially designed by the state to take five semesters, but we've cut it down to three to move you through and to save money and time. Uh, but it's doable. I mean, we, we're, we're turning people out with quality work. It's doable. Um, I've learned that I'm too nice already seeing areas that I need, need to improve upon. I, I never had that problem, but yeah, I understand some people do. <laughs> I, I, that, that was, nobody ever accused me of that, but that's okay. Um, but that's a good problem to have. But yeah, you, uh, you know, the leader of the organization can't always be nice. I mean, you can, you can be professional and treat people with courtesy, but, but in the end, you're responsible for outcomes. Um, uh, the upcoming schedule or if do Dr. Stedman will send you out weekly updates, he will continue to do that through the, throughout the course of this semester. He will do that. I do not send out weekly updates in 603. I post what, what to do, and you're supposed to be able to read the weekly schedule in 603 and, and monitor yourself. Now, it's not that we don't have a schedule. We have one. I'll show it to you right quick. Dr. Lamb, you get 603. Yeah, for this semester, though, you can always expect something on Sunday night. Yeah, or Sunday evening. Evening. but when in 603 – we, did, we, we intentionally don't do that in 603. So what we do in 603 is, is when you open up the shell and get started this summer, this is what you will have. You will have two weekly schedules, two weekly schedules. The class weekly schedule, I hope that you'll be able to see this on the screen. So this is what I'll post. This will be, this will be there when you start the class. It will look like this. And you, you, we can see it. All right. So it, what it will have for the class, it will have the topics, um, the reading that supports that, and then the assignment and discussion board that you are to do that goes along with that. Um, you will have that. There's a lot of interviews, a lot of talking to people, a lot of examining policies. So it has what you're to do every week. I come on every Wednesday night. And I have materials that support that topic that week. I won't go over the reading with you. Uh, what I will do is, is I will use real live examples of that topic. Um, you know, your like your school district's handbook on due process and things like that. Uh, I will have you doing that. So you will have this and you'll know what's due every week. I will not send an email on Sunday night. Um, but you will know what's due every week. Now, there won't be lates and zeros, you will, you know, but you're supposed to learn to self-pace. You will have this one, and you will also have this one. You will have your task stream weekly schedule of what's due 
in terms of Zoom and task stream, you will have a schedule on that one as well. And so it will tell you when, when we will meet and what we will cover, and this is all about task stream and doing your peer reviews and those things. I've got it purted out every week what you need to do. So you will get both of these schedules at the very beginning of the semester. You print them out, they're Word documents. You put them at your workspace and you can look at those and you'll know what you're doing. So you look every Sunday night and see where you are instead of Dr. Stedman having to look every Sunday night. Now he will coach you in those classes just like he's doing now. He, we will reverse roles, I'll teach and he'll coach. Um, but you know, I, I will not uh, advocate for him to send you uh, weekly reminders. I've given you your reminders up front. This is how the central office will do with you when you are a principal. They will give you a, a, a deliverable sheet like this or a timeline sheet and it's up to you to pace yourself um, because th that's, that's the way it works. When you're an AP, your principal will give you a duty roster or whatever and will expect you or will give you a list of your evaluations to do. And they won't remind you every week or check on you every week to see where you are on your list of walkthroughs, or evaluations, or turning in paperwork. Or they don't have time to go behind you. If they did, they wouldn't need you. And so uh, one of the things you're going to learn is, is when you get a job in the administration, they're going to give you these timelines and, and, and these um, – <clears throat> They're going to give you weekly schedules or monthly schedules. It's going to have, going to have, or it might be by semester in terms of, of the evaluations, the teacher evaluations you're required to do. But they're not going to follow up. You know, you'll have a you'll have a weekly staff meeting, administrative team meeting, usually on Friday mo Friday morning or Monday morning. And but they're, they're not going to go over this with you and, and say you did this, Dale, and you didn't do that. That's that's not what those meetings are for. You're supposed to be a responsible professional. If they give you a list of things to do and a timeline to do it in, it's, you're supposed to self-pace and get those things done. The biggie is going to be teacher evaluations because those have time deadlines on them for legal purposes. Yeah. You've got to learn to self-pace. Dr. Lamb, Jody asked a question. When summer school begins uh, May 29th and it will end the week of – uh, July 30th, because graduation is on August the 4th. There is no week off in the summer, by the there way. There is no week. And the good thing is, I don't want to scare you anymore, Dr. Lamb has already scared you, but you remember, you've got him in the summer, and this is normally, in a regular semester, this is a 15-week program, so you get to do in 10 weeks what everybody else is doing in 15 weeks this semester. So well, now let's let's look right here. Let me make sure I've got it on my calendar a little bit differently than that. Let's see. Yeah, we start summer school starts Monday, May twenty first. May twenty first. Okay. Oh wow. It's been moved up a week this year. Okay. I, okay. I forgot to tell you, that's been that's a recent okay. change. Okay, because that was I was following my schedule from last year. Okay, thank yep. you for sharing that. Monday, May twenty first, we'll start. Okay, and okay. Uh, you folks will have class on more than likely on Wednesday the twenty third. Will be your you'll be with me. We'll start on Wednesday the twenty third. But everything that we start, you you start your your weekly work and doing your reading on Monday the twenty first, and then we end. Um, the last day of summer school is Monday, July the 30th. Okay. We will not go into August this year. They moved it up a week and earlier. Now, again, there is no week off in summer school. Uh, we'll work around the, ho the holiday, July 4th. We just have to work around it. We do not, we have to have those 10 weeks. We do not take a week off. Uh, and you will have the same number of tasks due. Uh, nine, you'll have nine tasks due this summer, the same as you have now. You have five from the APSEL and four from the APTEL. You'll have four from the OMA this summer, four from the SKIP, and one from the CAP. You'll have nine due this summer as well. Um, but again, uh, we're, we, we've conditioned you to go faster. 
and one of the things, and, and I know you're probably going in overload now already, but what we'll do is that last class that we have this semester, we will, for those that have the initiative and want to go ahead, we will go over some, Dr. Lamb will go over some things so that you can get started before class actually begins, if you want to. We will have our last, we will have our last class on Monday the 8th, excuse me, Tuesday the 8th of, of May. Um, and you'll have two weeks before you're back in class again. You can probably knock out most of, of OMA task one during that time. As I told you, if you do a good job on your Aptel, I'll let you use the first three tasks of your Aptel as we'll substitute it for task two of the OMA. You'll knock out task three and then write your competencies like you did before. And you should be at a couple of weeks into the summer, you should have the OMA knocked out. Um, if you get started those two, those two weeks in between, <coughs> um, <coughs> it, it won't be a problem. We'll have it knocked out pretty quickly. Um, you'll have to be fast on your reviews. Um, we'll move that work on. We'll hit the skip pretty quickly. Uh, and then the first, the first of the uh, task of the cap, I want that done. So again, if we knock out the first task of the cap, you'll be able to continue with it during the month of August uh, and have most of it done before we roll back in to the fall uh, in your last semester. Um, if you can get started on the cap in summer school, you can pretty much finish it the time that we have off between the end of summer school and the start back of the fall semester. Um, so we will, we'll have you rolling on that. Um, and then you can knock out the cap pretty quickly. The SOP is a combination. I've already got a, a template for you. It's a combination of what you learned um, what the work that you did in the first five of the evidence artifacts is just pulling all that information together. Uh, now, I do not have a template for the skip and the cap. And there's a reason why. By the time that you get that far along, you ought to be able to make your own. We'll, we'll give you, you know, we'll give you a template this semester for both of them. We'll give you a template for the OMA to get you started in the summer. But after that, about midway through the summer, you ought to be able to design your own. And then I'm just for the for the SOP, I'm just telling you where what information to go and pull and put it together. But uh, I've had a thousand requests for templates for the skip and the cap. I've resisted that. I want you to be able to make your own. Um, that I think that's a, an important developmental step for you as a leader uh, to learn to put together those kinds of things yourself. So we will get you halfway through the summer with them, but then you, you got to kind of start taking the initiative to do it yourself. Um, if I see that we're too far behind, I, I might might help you out a little bit, but not too much. I, I need for you to start um, stepping out on your own uh, without so much support, um, because I can't, I can't know where you're going to get your first administrative job. You may get a principal that's very supportive and, and, and works with you uh, on your development a lot, and you may get a principal like me who <laughs> to be able to hit the ground running. Um, you know, when I was an elementary principal, um, and maybe even when I was middle school, uh, I found I had more time to help develop APs when I was a junior and senior high principal. I just didn't have the time. I had too many. I didn't have the time. Um, and so I can't know who's going to hire you for your first job. I don't know. I don't know how developmental they're going to be in your career and helping you develop. Um, so I've got to, we've got to try to get you to the point where if you don't have that support system that you, that you can do it on your own. Um, this business is not as collaborative uh, as it used to be uh, because of high stakes testing and, and accountability. Um, it's kind of sink or swim sometimes. I, that's unfortunate, but that's just the truth. We're trying to prepare you for the, the real world. 
All right. Okay. That's it. I, I'll I'll look forward to seeing work. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into uh, Dr. Hamilton's shell. Dr. Lamb, um, are you going to since you go, okay, since you Jason. signed on, are you going to record this? Or are you going to turn it back over to me? Or are you going to turn it over to me? It's been recording since I came on tonight. I'm guessing okay. that when I sign out, it's going to pop up on mine. If it does, okay, I'll, so I'll you, record it and send it. I'll process it and send it to you. Okay. That's what I was wanting to know. Okay. Yeah, it's been recording the whole time. Okay. All right. Everybody have a good week. We'll see you okay. in two weeks. Okay. Good night. Good night.